Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This vlog is going to show some midterms, some midterm studyings, and our stab lab or anesthesia lab. We learned to do local anesthesia, the numbing of your mouth and all the different areas, all the different nerves that we're targeting on each other. So first thing, I wanna input some footage from Monday. We're continuing crowns, but this was our first time doing provisionals or temporary restorations. So I'll try to let you all see what the process is like for that. You're basically mixing a polymer, which is the powder, with the monomer, which is the clear liquid. And you mix it up until you get kind of a doughy consistency. Let it start to get less glossy, and then you're able to take it out of the cup and place it into your stent. And from there, you wait for it to harden. You're kind of taking it on and off your typodont as it's hardening. And once it gets warm, you don't really want to take it off too much, maybe just once so it doesn't stick too much because once it's getting hot is when it's starting to really shrink and really adhere to the shape you want it to be. So you don't want to keep taking it off because it could shrink too much, but you don't want to not take it off at all because then it could get stuck. I also had to make some more stents before I went ahead and started my provisionals because we were doing temporary restorations, provisionals, those are interchangeable terms, for 230 and my stents were not good enough. They weren't tight enough, showing enough anatomy, and they were going to be kind of hyper occluded, too big, and not very um, direct with the anatomy that they were showing. So. I went ahead and made some more stents and what helped make these stents better was trimming the base of my model a lot more, so making the bottom not so thick, and then also trimming my model all the way in half to just have the quadrant that 30 is in rather than the whole mandibular arch. And that made more ability for the vacuum sealer to really suction all of that melted plastic into where I needed it to be and I got some better stents out of it. Alrighty, and now it is Tuesday when I'm filming, which is when Anesthesia Lab is. Yesterday I also had two midterms, so I can recap those later in the vlog when I also talk about my ortho midterm, which is coming up on Thursday. Yesterday we had Perio 2 and Oral Facial 3, and then Thursday we will have ortho. I'll recap all of the midterms at the end of the vlog. I'm about to head to the gym. I love these tank tops from Amazon and I'm washing my bedding as well as some of my normal laundry and then I'm gonna shower because we have some networking event tonight with the company Dental Dreams. They are a DSO that wants to host us at Pizza House tonight so we have dinner and drinks on them which I'm excited about but I do wanna be clean and put together. So directly after the gym, I'm gonna come back here and review some more notes for Anesthesia Lab. I already watched all the tutorial videos this morning while I was kinda of having breakfast and stuff. I'll make lunch and review, and then we will head into lab from 2 to 5, 5.30 to 6.30. I will be at Bible study, and then the event at Pizza House goes from 6 to 8, so I'll head over there after for about an hour or so, and then come back, and depending how I'm feeling after the dinner and drinks, possibly study for ortho. I thought I could show you all my new purse. It's kind of the same style as that Prada bag with the little side pouch for like your keys or your airpods and i really like it a lot back from the gym i'm gonna shower and take care of the rest of my laundry but i want to show you guys i'm obsessed with these scrubs i just got so this is not sponsored i think i do have a discount code if i do i'll put it on the screen but it's not an affiliate code i'm wearing the olive green today but i figured i'd also show you guys the like more muted 
orange, it's called terracotta. They come in sets for $46, including the top and bottom together, and I get a medium top and bottom for med gear. If you want more info on my scrubs, opinions, and sizing, and things, you can check out my scrub reviews video. I don't know if this was firm in that video, but for sizing reference. Med gear, medium top and bottom, Metaclo, medium top, large bottom, figs, medium, medium. So Metaclo is the only one I go up a size in for the bottoms. I'm usually an eight to 10 in bottoms. And then I also wanted to show you all what I'm wearing because I get some questions about business casual attire and I flare a little bit at the bottom and then I'm just gonna wear them with this gray turtleneck. So more on the casual side than the business side of business casual with some flats, so I'm gonna pack this in my backpack. That way I can change into it after lab so I can look a little bit more put together for the networking event. Since I have ASDA conferences and things coming up in November and January, as well as I went on that event with Pacific Dental, so you've heard about all of this in my past couple videos, look forward to a video with business casual outfit ideas because certain dental schools require business casual attire instead of scrubs and it might be helpful if you're doing certain networking events or if you're shadowing and they prefer you to wear business casual over scrubs and I will link everything that I'm wearing in that video in the description and anything I mentioned in this video, scrubs or otherwise that's still on sale, I will put it in the description of this video. I already told you all what I'm up to the rest of the day until lab, so we'll jump right into the clips from Anesthesia Lab. Much for me to do once you go in here, unless you'd rather me just wait. Oh, I'd rather have you stand right here. <laughs> go ahead and bite down. I just close in here. You wait 30 seconds. It's just a comfort thing to have me stand. Right. I'm gonna feel for it. You got feisty. About here. Up a little bit higher. Yep. Good little poke. Hey, hit. Huh? You hit bone? Yep. Then turn a little bit and go further. So the needle's up. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. Yeah. Asper? Yep. Good to go. Okay. Give it like half the cart. Okay. Wanna go nice and slow for you, Haley. Mm -hmm. And then while you're doing it, kind of angle, move. Nope, stay where you are. We're just gonna tip it. Yep. Oh, I see. Okay. I think that's a good amount. Is that yeah. about half? Yay. Okay, it is the next day, Wednesday. I woke up kind of early, kind of not, around 8-ish, and I ran to the grocery store really quickly because we're doing a like dip night with some friends tonight, and then I just made some breakfast, coffee, and watched one of the lectures for ortho, which is our midterm tomorrow. So I've reviewed two weeks of sessions of six that'll be covered. So I have four more to review at some point. I don't really know when, tonight or tomorrow morning. Basically, I can take the exam from anywhere between 8 a.m. and like 1 p.m. because then I have to assist after that tomorrow. And we have a quiz though at 11.30 for endodontics. So I would need to be done with it before that or start it after that. And I'm about to go into school right now because I'm going to assist at 11. It's 10, 14 right now, so I'm probably gonna get on the bus, that way I'm not late, and I'm bringing a lunch so that I can eat it in between the clinic appointment and sim lab. And in sim lab this week, we're starting temporary crowns or provisional restorations, basically what you get put on to cover your tooth, because you saw with the crown prep, we do drill away a lot of the tooth surface so you can't walk out of the dentist's office like that, it's not really safe for you um, and it would be hard to eat and everything so we give you a temporary crown and that can last about two weeks is what the preferred range is and then whenever your real crown that's supposed to last you many years comes in from the lab then we cement that on with some more permanent cement good morning it's thursday i woke up around 7 15 and the plan is to just keep reviewing from my bed with my coffee until i take the exam which will probably be around 10.45, we have our endo quiz that opens at 10.30 and it usually only takes me 5 or 10 minutes to do, so as soon as the quiz is done, I will go ahead and take this exam. It's only 40 questions, so I probably could start it before endo, but I really just want to use this time to review, make sure I feel as confident as possible, and I don't want to feel rushed finishing the exam. We're given two hours, so I want to make sure 
I give myself a two hour window to take it, even if I don't think I'll need it. So I'm gonna keep studying and once all is said and done, probably later tonight or sometime tomorrow, I'll let you know how today's exam in ortho went and how the other two midterms went on Monday. Put on these terracotta scrubs I was showing you guys earlier in the video. I went to the gym after the endo quiz and also got Chipotle, so I ate that. And I'm gonna head into assist right now. Um, I ended up taking the ortho exam around 9.15 and was done right around 10ish, and then I was able to do the end do the endo quiz right when it opened because it's only open for like a certain small window. And that was great that I was able to do the exam first because it gave me time to go to the gym. So now I'm in a really good mood. It's a beautiful fall day, 55 and sunny. So I'm gonna walk to school. That's why I'm leaving a little bit early because it's a 2 p.m. assist and it's only one. But I'm gonna pack up my bag and head into school. So it's actually later, a few weeks later, I did not remember and was super busy to film this clip at the end of the video letting you all know how the exams went so I'm gonna refresh and make sure I even know which exams I was supposed to talk to you all about it's the week before Halloween that this vlog was I'll just quickly go through my results like the scores I got on the exams and anything I remember anything I'm gonna do differently next time because honestly the exams that I thought would go well didn't and the exam that I thought would be harder I did better on so it's always weird how that works out, but I got a 32 out of 42 for my oral facial class. That was the first exam on Monday morning. And the, what was surprising about that, that I got a 76, like a C, was they had an exam review and he pretty much went through every single question vaguely saying exactly what topic we needed to study. So you would think that by reviewing that and then going through the notes and highlighting pretty much the answers to what he was saying, I would have done well on the exam, but yet I still got 10 questions wrong. So I don't really understand what happened there. Still a little confused, but thankfully that class has a bunch of extra credit assignments. You can see them here and they're not due till the end of the semester, which is really nice. And then later that day, our perio, which is periodontology, also won credit because we're in a different perio class that is periotherapy as well. So this is periodontology and that was really about microbiology. So related to the bacteria, microbes that are found in your gums. So while you're ranging from healthy to gingivitis, to periodontitis, how does that bacterial population change is the main scope. And it was a lot of case studies and research and that's what made it tough is because they were expecting you to kind of analyze research results that they presented in the lectures and honestly it was just a little bit above my head. I still did okay on that exam. I got a 42 out of 50 which it was worth 25 points so it ended up being 21 out of 25 which is an 84% which not great but honestly anything in the 80s I'm pretty happy with for dental school exams and then on Thursday of this week's vlog I had my ortho midterm and an endo quiz on the ortho I got a 92.5 that was with a little bit of extra credit she had 40 questions and then there was a chance to get up to five points I believe of extra credit with a written response to a case like exactly all the details the analysis the orthodontic needs how you would treat them um, really lots of information that you could include so I think I got probably two or three points from that to boost my score but I was really proud to get an A on that and then I also got full points on the endo quiz and to round off this video I just want to end it with a little reflection and encouragement and it was a feeling that I had after that endo midterm the week before and after ortho scoring pretty well on those it just made me feel very happy and confident for once in dental school. I mean, it's happened before, but it was notable in that moment. Just reflecting on first year so many times when I would like fail an exam or just not be performing the way I wanted or information just wasn't sticking, it was information overload. It was really easy for myself to say, am I gonna be a good dentist if I don't know all this information? Am I meant to be here? This seems to be coming easier to other people than myself. I can't handle this. Lots of like imposter syndrome, you know? So it was kind of full circle to realize now that I'm in these classes that are actually more clinically relevant, not random systems classes that aren't always applicable like I was taking first year or cell biology, things that are stretching it a little bit when it comes to dentistry. Now that I'm in the dental specific classes that are so crucial to what I'm gonna be doing every single day, it's diagnosing, it's treatment planning, 
it's noticing diseases and I can perform well on those. I can critically think through these exams that aren't memorizing facts. They're thinking through patient cases. They're analyzing information that you're given and coming up with the correct diagnosis. Like that takes passion to care about the material. That takes time and effort and that takes someone that's capable of being a dentist. And I'm sure most of my classmates feel the same way that like I can do these exams, I can handle this. And it was just such a nice, Feeling. And I hope this is some encouragement to you if you're in your first year or even as a pre-dental student and you're feeling any doubts that it's going to get better and once you get into more and more clinical classes, you will start to feel more confident, I promise you. And you are capable, you're capable now, you will be capable and you can do this. So that's how I want to end this video. I hope you all enjoyed this vlog, seeing stab labs, seeing some exams, and I will see you in the next video.